Brother Philip has power that I never dreamed existed. He even casts out evil spirits and heals all sorts of diseases. I don't think he uses fakery or sorcery. His is genuine power from God. I believe that. That's why I was baptized and joined up with them. I've been following Philip everywhere he goes. I'm amazed at the miracles he performs. I just can't get over it. Peter, remember that day we stopped at Jacob's well in Samaria and Jesus sat and talked to that woman? <laughs> How vexed we were that he would even talk to a Samaritan. And he stayed two days teaching them. The seed that Jesus sowed those two days is yielding a harvest now. The Samaritans are believing and are being baptized by the hundreds and thousands. Yes, I know. Philip is a devout man. God is greatly blessing his efforts. As you say, souls are being saved by the thousands. Well, how did you know about it? Well, it's being talked about by almost everyone. Isn't that how you knew? No. Uh, Philip sent word that he needs help. Who shall we send? That is a matter for all the disciples to vote on, wouldn't you say? I'll call a meeting of the Twelve immediately. Philip's need is urgent. It seems that you, Peter, and you, John, have been chosen to go to Samaria and help with the work there. You baptized them, but as yet the Holy Spirit has not descended upon them. I was waiting for help, Peter. It's a mammoth task. I know. Get the believers together, and we will pray and lay hands on them that they may receive the Holy Spirit. O oh God of our fathers, God of truth and love, these people gathered here love thee, and have joined by baptism thy family. Now, O oh God, as we lay our hands upon each one, send thy Holy Spirit down upon them, that the adoption into thy family may be complete. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Peter, this is a great power you have. Just by laying on of hands, you can cause the Holy Spirit to descend upon a person. It was Jesus Christ's departing gift to mankind. I would like to have that power. I have not the power to give it. Oh, I didn't expect you to give it to me. I'll pay for it, any amount you name. Your money perish with you, Simon, for thinking that you can buy God's gift. You have no part or share in our work, for your heart is not right in God's sight. Repent and pray to the Lord that he will forgive you for thinking such a wicked thing as this. Pray that God curse you not, for I see that you are full of bitter envy and are a prisoner of sin. Pray you to the Lord for me, that the curse of God which you have spoken of come not upon me. Peter. May I ask why you did not pray for Simon as he requested? He asked me to pray only that the punishment for his wicked plans and thoughts come not upon him. He did not repent or ask to be forgiven. Her Majesty, Queen of Ethiopia, will recall that this is the time of year I go to Jerusalem to worship according to my belief and custom. May I have Her Majesty's permission to go again this year? You're one of my most trustworthy officials. I worry none at all with you in charge of my treasure house. You have my permission, but be sure to take the usual guards and servants. There are many robbers and murderers along the roads these days, and I want my treasurer back. <laughs> Thank you, Your Royal Majesty. <laughs> Well, we may as well head for home now, Captain. The ceremonies are over. Yes, sir. Today, sir? Oh, early in the morning. Have my carriage ready by summit. Is His Highness comfortable? Oh, as much as can be expected in a carriage. I bought something to occupy my time and mind. A copy of the book of Isaiah. It's part of the Israelite scripture. Yes, sir. Driver, get started. Get up now. Come on, get up. Philip, 
Get yourself ready and go south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. The Lord wants me here for some mission. I know not what, but it shall be revealed unto me at the proper time. Hmm. Here comes a caravan now. Must be an important person with all those attendants and soldiers. Oh, he's riding in a carriage. He must be important. Philip, go over and stay close to that chariot, and you will know what to do. He is like a sheep that was taken to be slaughtered. He was like a lamb that makes no sound when its wool is cut off. He did not say a word. He was humiliated, and justice was denied him. No one will be able to tell about his descendants, for his life is taken from this earth into heaven. Do you understand what you are reading, sir? Oh, how can I understand unless someone explains it to me? Driver, stop the carriage. Whoa, whoa. Now, get up here and sit with me, my friend. All right, driver. Come on, yeah. Sir, I pray thee, of whom speaketh Isaiah? Of himself? Of some other man? Then Philip began to speak, starting from this very passage in Isaiah. He told the good news about a crucified and risen Savior. After a while, they came to a place where there was some water, and the important treasurer said, Here is some water. What is to keep me from being baptized? The carriage was stopped, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, Behold, Philip was taken away by the Holy Spirit. He has been taken away. He was of God. Of a truth, I have found the way to salvation. Thank you, dear God, and thy son, Jesus. And he went on his way full of joy. <laughs> 